leaking glowworm boiler. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video we've got leaking boilers, we've got um, dangerous gas fires, we've got a question, so Elliot's got a question about an idea of logic that I'd like you guys to answer if you could. All these videos today or most of this today has been sent in from Elliot from eFry Gas Services so please like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it's an action packed video, so yeah, let's go and have a look. Okay, so I got called to a friend that just bought the property, had a look, and signs that the G10 has leaked, but it's had a new G10 seal, is the burn mark, new hoses. New uh, new condensed collector for the phone in up here. But what I did notice is some damp just back there. I'll try and zoom in. You can't really see the damp there, but there is damp running down that brown line going down the back. Um, and also, if you have a look at the top, you can see just there, look, water vapour. Or leaking product combustion, that's water vapor there, it's hard to see um, on the camera. But it would appear the Condex collector has not been fitted quite correctly or sealed correctly because that brown line there is a water line. So condensation, condensate from the boiler and another one there left the brown line just in there so keep your eyes open just because things have been changed we know to get oh there you go you can see how damp that looks like it's soaking wet that's the boiler in management mode but it's soaking wet there keep your eyes open guys there's my readings gaining flushing around up in that top corner where we showed you there was loads of damp. I'll get the torch in. There, look, you can see it with the rust patches, it looks a bit shiny. That's water, water vapour, product combustion leaking. And I'm getting some good readings. It picks up, it depends on where I move it in the jet, but it is, it is there. So it's going to be time for this one to have be taken all out. Make sure the back of the actual boiler case is not rusted through. Um, because sometimes when the condensed collectors go, it's a bit quieter, when the condensed collectors go on these, you can end up finding that you've, obviously the back case is rusted as you can see, different marks of rust, but you can find they actually rust through completely. Obviously they've rusted through, you can probably speak to Glowworm, um, or whoever the manufacturer is of a particular boiler, if they work on a condensed collector type unit, and get a whole new boiler case, but I mean, I doubt you'd get one, it'd be a boiler rice off really. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to come back this week, take my heat exchanger out, check out the contents collector, I'll end up replacing it in a new seal, new G10, put it all back, service it, and hopefully it's all good. Um, flue's nice and wonky on this one as well. don't know if you can see that in this light, but yeah, a little bit, uh, little bit rough ski, but uh, the joys. And for the age of this boiler, just so you know, so it's had a G10 steel done at some point. There we go. Um, and round about year 2000, so it's 21 years old nearly. Well, according to that serial number, or no, sorry, 0503. Oh, okay, maybe 2003 ish, maybe. But um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so also in the same property, my friend's just bought and was going to move in today with that leaking boiler, but I thought I'd have a look at the fire and a nice bit of fire cement that's cracking and at some point it's been painted black. I thought, well, on these ones, these are a big, heavy cast iron trim. But I'll just pull the trim forward, and you can see behind there, if I can get my phone in. Ah, do it this side, might be easier. You can see that that, you can get the fingers, that there is the fire trim. That's the rubber seal that should be sealed tight against the back of the fireplace, the back panel. And you can see, there we go, that's better, there. That's the rubber seal that should be touching. And even before me pulling this forward, you can see it's already not sealed. 
gas fires are always the ones that are going to kill people massively because they're open flue. You can touch the flames. Um, but just keep your eyes open, guys. Hello to everyone. So, more gas fires, I'm afraid. You're probably fed up with them now. But this one is um, the second appliance on a landlord's gas safety check I came to do. The first thing I did notice is a little bit of black there, look. I don't know if you can see it in the sunlight, and a little bit of black up here. Now, fires are allowed to spill for the first five minutes. We all know that on the on the uh, spillage test, but, you know, we shouldn't be getting black marks. But I looked on the side, and that doesn't look flush. So, when I pulled out, or pulled off the, uh, the trim on this, and this is a great fire. This is a Legend Vantage gas fire. I love them. I fit loads of them. They're great. But you look down there, if I can get a focus, there's a great big gap. And look at that, silicon. Bits of silicon that's half sealed some of it, not sealed all up there. Look at the state of that. And it's a mile off of the back panel. So these are, again, things you need to look out for on your gas checks. Don't just go, yeah, it'll be all right, and chuck a, uh, a flu flow and a spillage test. And you can see there's a bit of a gap I can't get my camera in at that angle, it's going to be a bit awkward. So yeah, that's the things you need to look out for, guys. This one is not sealed, it's fairly recently been fitted, so um, the customer's not very happy, they're going to contact the uh, installer to get this sorted, so I have at-risked it, um, isolated it. I mean, it wasn't, pull it wasn't spilling fumes at my time that I was here, the signs of spillage, so you could ID, but you know, you, you classify, classify it as you wish. Um, you're the engineers on sites, but silicon, great in it, rather than using the correct uh, fixing kit. In fact, they have used the fixing kit. There's the guide cables there, look. But nonetheless, they decided to silicon it to fill the gaps. What I think's probably happened with these grates here that you get, a lot of these, and especially some old Devon grates, standard fire is 16 by 22 high, 16 wide by 22 high. This opening has probably not got that, so they've sort of wedged in and left the bottom sticking out and thought, Filling it with silicon was adequate, which it clearly is not. So there we go. Keep your eyes open. Cheers. Good afternoon. It's the Alan Park Fan Club. So my question today is, there it is. As always, it's an ideal logic. So you're going to have a cracked sump. There we go, focuses back in. So you can see there's a crack there, clear as daylight, always in the same spot, I find. And... There's the line just there, look, coming up through. Always in the same spot, I find. But there was no white on this one showing, on the uh, sump cover. It was there. No white, so it hadn't gone. But, clear as daylight, it's there. The crack's there. It's on its way. So my question is... There it is. Bent down there, look. That's a bit better. My question is, how proactive are you guys? Are you um, changing them before they go, or are you waiting until they go? And how far? I mean, this one's obviously quite a long, long crack right down the length there, you can see. Try and get the focus good. And obviously right down almost to there. Do you let them go all the way through? Any signs of any crack whatsoever? Do you then replace them? Or uh, what do you do? What's your routine? Just out of interest, really. And the other question I have for you is, I'm flushing out the main heat exchange on the Logics. Do you find you get a lot more dirt out of the C35s, um, the more modern versions, than you do the standard Logic or the Logic Plus 24s? Um, out of the 24s and 30s, Logics and Logic Pluses, I don't get an awful lot. But the C35s, you know, they're serviced every year. When I'm flushing through the main heat exchanger, it is endless. It's just going and going and going. So just wanted to know, is it that I'm only seeing these, the mainly the C35s and the big boys um, on dodgy estates where they've the system's not balanced, it's heat exchange is not being used to its full capacity, the ball is not condensing enough, and therefore burning more dirty? Who knows? Thank you again, Elliot, for the videos. And as always, if anybody else can send me some videos in, I will add my WhatsApp details below. And it's really, you know, I really appreciate the people that help and support this channel. 
Um, and in answer to Elliot's question, um, with the ideal objects, personally, if I went to one that was cracked like that, I would advise the customer that the sump needs to be changed. So what would you guys do? Please put a comment below. Let me know what you would do. Most of the time, the customer would just follow your advice and they would change it. Obviously, if you leave that by next year, the boiler could be wrecked because I've seen them before where after a few months, when that when that little split, when it starts to drip, which they do, the condensate then drips into the bottom of the boiler. It can damage the gas pipe. It can just wreck the case. I mean, I've had boilers that are three year old, um, three year old ideologics that we've we've had to replace the boiler. So it's really important that if you do see something like that, then in my opinion, you would change it. But as as I say, please put your comments below. And, and, and let us know what you think. Um, thanks for watching. And as with all my videos, please refer to the installation instructions and the manufacturer's advice at the time. Don't, please don't take anything in this video as factual. You must follow the installation instructions. And it's very good advice to have the boiler serviced every 12 months. And then if the boilers are under warranty, then a lot of the time you'll have no issues at all because the manufacturers will repair the boilers under the warranty that you have.